So, uh, good morning. Uh, it's a nice, beautiful day in South Carolina. A little humid, but you know, it's part of South Carolina. Chairman Ogasan's smiling because it's not Japan. Uh, so it's good. Thank you again for flying all the way here, sir. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to welcome everyone today to our announcement of the opening of the University of South Carolina's Digital Transformation Lab located at the McNair Research Center. I'm Bill Kirkland, Executive, Executive Director of the Office of Economic Engagement. Uh, we'll get into our program in a few minutes. I want to thank some people and recognize some folks in the, in the audience. And first, of course, our First Lady, uh, Patricia Moore Pastides. Again, thank you, as always, for your leadership. Our, uh, our Board of Trustee members, uh, I'll trust uh, Tommy Cofield, William Hubbard, my friend Mr. Bike, uh, and, and uh, Secretary Kenny Heath. I, don't think, I think that's all, but I welcome him. Mr. Bike, thanks for coming in from Florence. Thank you, sir. I, I, I'd also like to recognize, of course, our Governor, Governor Henry Dargan McMaster, uh, and also uh, Controller General Richard Ekstrom. Hey, Richard. Thank you for coming, sir. Also, uh, I think I saw Mayor Steve Benjamin earlier. He, uh, he has a bunch of, uh, a lot of mayors in town this weekend. There's a lot of events if everyone could actually attend. It's very exciting what's happening this weekend with the, mayor, the mayor's convention here in South Carolina, in Columbia. I'd also like to recognize uh, Michael McHenry. Uh, is representing Secretary Bobby Hitt today and his team. Thank you, Michael. And I saw Sam, but all the city and county and local elected officials, we appreciate your help. We appreciate your service for our city and our county. Uh, also, because we only have a few of the leaders here, but I want to recognize the members of each one of our companies that we're partnering with. We have members of the executive leadership teams from IBM, Siemens, Samsung, Gesekawa, and also Nephron Pharmaceuticals, because I want to welcome them, even though we can't have everyone speak, but it's great to have the, the entire executive leadership team. I think half of IBM IoT is here globally. There's like 18 of them, so I appreciate that. I also want to I also want to recognize and thank uh, Bob Quinn with the South Carolina Research Authority. Bob has been with SCRA for a couple years now, um, and the relationship through his leadership with the University of South Carolina has dramatically increased and improved in a positive way. Uh, his collaboration is direct investments in our center, but also collaboration research projects. I want to thank Bob for all your leadership, Bob. It's been an honor to work with you. And also, I, I want to recognize Mark Cut. I mean, not Mark, but Randy Cut. Sorry, Randy. Uh, Randy re basically leads all the uh, innovation centers, and Randy's been very helpful in putting our lab together. And also, right now, USC is about 50% of the innovation center down the road. So. Uh, I appreciate Randy's leadership and his partnership and everything we've done. So thank you, Randy. Uh, so today is an important, important moment and truly represents Dr. Pastides visionary leadership in bringing USC research into fa the fabric of private sector research efforts. Today is a side of that. We have over 25, possibly 30 senior executives from five separate companies here today. And we, and of course, it's Dr. Pastides leadership in the last five years that started that as it relates to the Office of Economic Engagement. So Dr. Pastides, of course, thank you for that. Uh, what I'd like to say is today is a great example of that leadership and what we're doing in economic development. If you look to your right and to your left, you're looking at two buildings that are right in the middle of USC's InnoVista Research District. And it's an incredible opportunity here, but also we have the Burt Story Innovation Center, or I should say Engineering Innovation Lab, or Center, Keep in mind there, we announced back in 2015 the USC IBM Innovation Center at this building. There's a 2,000 square foot IoT executive briefing center in the building. But I really want to point out, which I think is very important, and, and Richard Ekstrom, thank you for your support, and the governor, and Chairman Leatherman, and the entire old budget control board, and Don Tomlin for his help on this. There are now today over 30 private sector jobs in that building. And what I want y'all to point out is over, the average salary is over $70,000 a year. Working, now the key to that is they're threaded and working with the University of South Carolina students and research. So not only the high paying jobs, over 300, our students are interning there and our researchers are working with them. So uh, it's working. InnoVista, the InnoVista Research District is incredibly successful and it's working and this is a great example of it. Uh, today is our, really the announcement of our new digital transformation center. 
It's a lab. It was 15,000 square feet housed at the McNair Research Center. Uh, the partnership announced today will include IBM, Samsung, Siemens, and Yasukawa collaborating across the university, including College of Engineering and Computing, Darla Moore School of Business, USC Medical School, College of Pharmacy, and Public Sector. I would like to personally introduce and announce and thank, and I, thank I think Dr. Abdel Bayoumi is still down in the lab working on it, but I wanted to thank him for his leadership. He's, not only is he the McNair Center Executive Director, he runs our Center for Preventive Maintenance and also our Di Digital Transformation Lab. So I want to thank Dr. Bayoumi for his leadership. Uh, it's an honor now because it is his visionary, it's his vision to announce our president. I really don't have to go through his bio. I think 99% of us know all about it, but Dr. Harris Pastidi is our president. Uh, Dr. Pastidi. Well, let me add another uh, kind welcome to everybody and thank you, Bill. Let me say thank you to Bill Kirkland explicitly for helping get us here today. Thank you also for that kind and maybe overly generous introduction of me. Is it time for your annual performance yes, review, sir. I wonder? I thought so. Well, <laughs> let's skip it this year. He, he's done good this year. I also uh, extend a, a welcome ag again to our uh, wonderful uh, city and state leaders, especially the governor of the great, let me say, the very great state of South Carolina and two-time alumnus from the University of South Carolina. Thank you for being here, Governor. You know, South Carolina has a lot going for it. We're a right-to-work state. We have one of the greatest deep ports in the United States of America. But today is not about that. Today is also about doing things in South Carolina that are better than things being done anywhere else in the world. And to do that, you cannot do it alone. You need world-class partners, like the five corporate partners whose names have already been mentioned. I urge everybody to take the tour of the DTL, the Digital Transformation Lab this morning. This tent is nice, the buildings here is, are, are also nice, but you've not seen anything unless you go down to the lab, as I did yesterday. I'll mention just a few things. An Apache helicopter inside a USC building. Can you imagine that? Okay, partly de-weaponized, that's important. <laughs> But our people are working to do condition-based maintenance to know before a pilot or an engineer does that that Apache might need service based on the sand that it is encountering. So we saw different kinds of particulates and sand. So we will know computerized before anyone else does that that Apache helicopter needs service. We saw a Samsung state-of-the-art refrigerator that will allow you, if you're at your favorite grocery store, to get on your iPhone and you want to know, what do I need to make that curry tonight? That's a South Carolina food, isn't it, curry? I think we invented that here in the old. Well, you could plug in, you could get the recipe downloaded through that, through your iPhone and, and, and your interface, and beyond that, the refrigerator will also tell you whether you have the ingredients or do you need to pick up some more of that powder or vegetable. How amazing is that? It will also tell you if the food inside is getting ready to move beyond its expiration date so that you would be able to use it in time and not have to waste it. Amazing. I also saw the great robotic arms and robotic bodies of the Yusukawa Corporation. They even let me manipulate the robotic arms to, to, to examine parts that someday may go in a Boeing airplane, uh, allowing us to inspect them so carefully and meticulously that air, air travel will be made safer someday. I will tell you my six-year-old granddaughter, I'm not sure about the four-year-old, could have done it quicker and more accurately than I did, but that's okay, that's okay. And finally, we saw um, an incubator like you might see in a NICU, a neonatal intensive care unit, with a, well, not with a baby inside, but with a doll inside. And so the same kinds of things that can analyze an Apache helicopter to see how it may be doing can be used to analyze a premature baby. And of course, they have monitors now in a NICU, but not as advanced and not as multi-systemic as the ones that will be developed here someday. So it's a great day. I'm so proud of our university. We're in the top 1% of patent-producing universities. Now I'm going to take a deep breath. 
not in the state, not in the nation, but in the world. And, and, and that is in some measure because we've been recruiting the trailblazers to this state. It is, Governor, as you know better than anyone, about quality of life, but it's also about the quality of the facilities we have. And before this uh, digital transformation lab, frankly, we didn't have the facilities that we needed. You know, the next frontier is AI. Everybody knows what AI is, artificial intelligence. It's going to mean a lot to us, to our children and grandchildren. And today, I'm also pleased to say that with IBM, we're launching the Industrial Internet of Things Lab, which is a cloud-based uh, data uh, retrieval and, uh, and research uh, organ that works with the Watson technology part, part of IBM. And what I'm most, and I'll end here and say what I'm very pleased about is that all of these great companies, IBM and Siemens and Samsung, and Yusakawa and Nephron will be bringing customers to the DTL to show customers the kind of real life research that's being done and the applications that in an office setting they could only brag about. So it is a wonderful day, a great day for uh, our people far beyond here. Promise me that you'll go visit the lab. Promise, promise me that you'll come back time and time again. Thank you everybody and best wishes. So uh, it's actually an honor to introduce the next uh, speaker, who's a good friend, uh, Governor Henry McMasters. Interestingly enough, he's our 117th governor of South Carolina, and he's been a very strong supporter of the University of South Carolina's economic development activities. As Lieutenant Governor, uh, he got to know Watson, IBM Watson Healthcare very well. Uh, we had multiple meetings and looking really at improving healthcare delivery for our growing senior population. And, uh, the go Lieutenant Governor at the time spent a lot of time in our conference room having those discussions to understand what Watson, what's IOT and, and, and delivery into healthcare. He also has played a key role in really looking at our manufacturing state and partnering discussions with IBM, with Siemens and Samsung. And I know he looks forward to future discussions with Yisikawa on how we can actually expand the relationship in the state. So uh, it's my honor to uh, introduce our Governor, Henry Dargan McMaster. Thank you. I'll be, I'll be very brief. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Bill. I can look around and see some of my classmates when I was an undergraduate here. Artificial intelligence is nothing new to us. All intelligence we had was completely artificial. <laughs> I'm wondering what we learned back then, but it's all paid off. I'll be very brief. This is a happy day, and I look at these faces. I've, I've been invited to a number of these and, and to see a lot of the same people and see some new people as well, particularly from across the oceans. And it's really a thrill to see what is happening here on this campus, happening in South Carolina. I referred to this place that, that we're standing now some years ago as Brain Power USA. And that's the answer. That's, that's where it all lies. And this is a remarkable confluence of academia, free enterprise, innovation, and imagination. Because without imagination, you, you can't go forward. So this is a happy, happy day for the state. I'm happy to be here. I know you're happy to be here. I congratulate everyone. And I believe this is, we've had a number of great beginnings here on this campus and in this state. But I believe that this particular event today marks a beginning that we may not see the likes of again. This, this what is happening here, I believe, is going to launch our state, just as Dr. Pastides has said. Imagine this is the first in the world of such a facility. That you, do, you don't just wake up one morning and create something like that. It took a lot of work, a lot of thinking over the years by a lot of people, a lot of support, and a lot of imagination. So I'm thrilled to be here, and I say mark your day on the calendar. There are other great dates that we remember. We remember where we were on that day. I believe this will be one that we will all remember because this is a great new beginning for the great road to prosperity in South Carolina, and we need to be a world leader, and we are on track to do that. Thank you. Well, and I want to thank the governor again because we have a, some challenges in Georgetown, the PD right now that he's been dealing with for what, the last two and a half weeks. It's been ongoing, and uh, we pray for the governor and his leadership as we continue to Hopefully today will crest and things will start to come but somewhat back to normal at least uh, for the people that live in that area. So uh, thank you again for your leadership.
uh, you know, it, it, usually when you come to an event like this and you have IBM folks here, and I can pick on them because I used to be one. Sorry, guys, get ready. Uh, but I, what I like about this is normally you get one and it's a junior level person and we, we, we have a good time with it. But in a day today, because it's, I won't say it's so important, I think they just showed up by accident. But today we actually have two IBM leaders that I've had the fortune to work with Skip, but also meet Kareem of the last 24 hours and what an incredible leader he is. So uh, a couple of comments about IBM and then I'll turn it over and let them uh, speak about our partnership and what we're doing. Um, it's important key point today. We have IBM Watson researchers from not only South Carolina, not only San Francisco, but also in, from Israel that are doing some really, really interesting things about UAVs and, and flying. You'll see that today in our center. But also we have folks from uh, Japan they, of course, here with Yisakawa, which we're very excited about them coming all the way here for our event. Uh, we also have today is Dr. Nancy Greco, where my friend Nancy is. Why is she important? Nancy is our lead researcher in the Watson Research Lab in uh, Yorktown Heights, New York. Nancy's now a visiting scientist at the University of South Carolina working with Noble on some really, really interesting thing around acoustics and preventive maintenance. And she's in the back now. She didn't expect me to say that. But for the next four months, she's going to be a visiting scientist working alongside of our researchers and our students as we look at preventive maintenance on robots, uh, whatever it might be, as it's related to acoustics. So Nancy, thank you. And we welcome to South Carolina. And, and, and I promise you the one last welcome, one last thank you I have is for John Ward. He's a short guy in the back. Gets, but uh, John has been the key to all this happening for us. We've had a lot of leaders. We've had a lot of folks. But John, everyone else kind of, they're here a lot and then they go away. John has been the guy, the staple guy that's always there for us and, and really I think he's bugging Skip awful lot asking for things. But John, thank you so much for your leadership and you are a Gamecock, so we, we do thank you for that, John. So, so all, that, all that being said, I'll step aside and I'd like to introduce Skip Snyder. Skip is Vice President and Partner, Global Watson IoT and 14.0 Leader, Global Business Services, Watson IoT, SEM Global Press. Really what it means is in the services practice, Skip runs everything. So uh, we all welcome Skip Snyder. Well, that introduction, I clearly need to shorten my title. Well, good morning and thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and joining you during today's event. I want to tell a little bit of a story. So I took this role uh, within IBM uh, at the beginning of this year. And shortly after taking this role, I found out about this Klein Innovation Center at the University of South Carolina and felt like it was probably time for me to go find out what this was all about. So I flew down here and the two people that I met were Bill Kirkland and Dean Hajariri. First, let me say the hospitality that uh, was shown to me is second to none and has been uh, the same for every visit that I've had down here. They spent five hours with me. They took me through um, what they've done with IBM up to that point. They talked about the pride and the plans that they had for the creation of the lab that you are going to tour today. They gave me a tour of the facility. They showed me demos that have been created for our clients by their students. Demos like the Apache helicopter gearbox connected to IBM's IoT platform to predict maintenance insights. Then, I believe to make sure I, they, I knew that they meant business, they showed me the entire Apache helicopter. Because really, what's an IoT center without an Apache helicopter? <laughs> After that, they took me to the area that was being expanded into the center that you're going to tour today. Throughout the tour, they introduced me to the faculty who will, um, and the students. And I have to say, they all demonstrated such enthusiasm, innovation, and knowledge. You know, there's a recent study um, found that IBM did that 82% of businesses are eager to move ahead with, I with AI adoption. Therefore, the skills that are required to support those jobs tomorrow need to be created today. I'm already starting to see some of those skills resonate in this university already. Today, we're thrilled to partner with, the, with USC on the in new Industrial Internet of Things Research Lab. The lab includes Watson IoT solutions and other selected IBM technologies to be used by USC for students, for learning, teaching, and research opportunities. The center will provide students the opportunity to learn inside and outside of the classroom and further honing their skills for projects in real world environments. It will also be used by IBM to continue to host our clients and select business partners for the purposes of educating them how to align their organization with their IoT strategy. 
again, in a real world environment. What I mean by that is they're gonna be able to collect data, execute analytics, and pro provide insights right in front of their eyes. And that's what our clients want to see. Our IBM technologies and expertise in Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and IBM Watson, combined with USC's extraordinary faculty with highly specialized skills in predictive maintenance, asset optimization, advanced analytics, and supply chain, bring a unprecedented experience and hands-on learning to campus and students and companies. I look forward to connecting with you throughout the day and finding out how your companies plan on leveraging AI and IoT. Thank you. And also now it's honored uh, Dr. Kareem Youssef, uh, who is now is the global IoT leader, general manager for IBM. Please, Kareem. Thanks, Bill. You know, if Bill is to, believe, is to be believed, half of IBM is here somewhere. Uh, so clearly we get two spots. But I want to talk about the power of collaboration, which is really what underpins this entire conversation. We talk a lot about AI, but let me focus first of all on the I, intelligence. How do you learn anything without collaborating? If you think back to anything that you've learned or understood, you gain it by collaborating with others. And the investment of me and my team here at the university is really around, centered around that collaboration to advance what we're trying to do around artificial intelligence as applied into the realm of industrial IoT. Let me tell you a quick story. Yesterday I was walking through the lab and um, one of my teams was um, talking to me about our visual inspection capabilities, right? We've got this AI system, Watson, that we've trained to kind of spot defects. And they were telling me about the problems of spotting defects on painted BMW doors, right? You can't just take pictures. You can train the system with pictures, but when you've got a door that's really unblemished, it's really hard just to take the right picture. And a professor's walking past from the other side of the lab and says, oh, I've been doing some work with laser matrix that we can use to actually effectively take very granular pictures that you can use to train your system. Right across in the other room now, they're connecting these two systems together, right? The research that's being done with laser matrices to train this Watson system that we've put in the lab. That's collaboration that just comes from people being in a space. And that's how you drive learning. That's how you drive progress. And that's why for me, this is really critical to all that we wish to do. Bringing our clients here, underpins that notion of collaboration, right? Them, they, them being able to see it in practice, them being able to contribute to the discussions, the exposure that the researchers get, all of it drives this underlying notion of collaboration to further the art. Someone asked me before I came up sta uh, on stage, why here? Well, only, you only need to look at the industrial base in South Carolina to understand. BMW, Volvo, Michelin, these are all clients of mine clients that we are trying to help them advance the value propositions that they're trying to deliver in operating their equipment and their plants more effectively. Look at the partners we're talking about, Samsung, Siemens. You know, this is all about collaboration, right? Because no solution that we put, we are kind of in the software side of things, no solution is complete without a robotic arm to actually connect and look at the system, right? And things to drive the actual machinery, world of machinery and co that execute. So I want us all to think as we go through today, as we see the labs, as we enjoy the innovations that are before us, to understand that what we're really talking about here, why we all are investing, is it's about collaboration. You can only advance the art of the possible when you learn together. And I'm looking forward to how much more learning I'll be doing with the Dean as we drive forward state of AI out, out of here, out of USC, and indeed for what we're doing with IBM and Watson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this next speaker, I'll be careful and not to say anything. Uh, my friend from Samsung. <laughs> uh, it's actually an honor to introduce my friend from Samsung, Dr. Choi who's got a long title, at the end of the day he runs everything at Samsung. Um, Senior Vice President of Global Business Technology Strategy and Digital Appliances Business. Dr. Choi and I met in March of 2017 when he was considering South Carolina 
uh, as a, a place where they could put their facility in Newberry, what they ended up doing. And I, I met him through our governor. Um, Dr. Choi is responsible for Samsung being in South Carolina. Uh, he led that investment. We're really proud to call him a friend of the university. Dr. Choi, I just want to thank you publicly for what you've done for this, this university, but also for the universe, uh, for the state of South Carolina. So my friend, Dr. Choi. Actually, Bill is such a wonderful salesman. So I wish I have him on the Samsung in South Carolina. <laughs> this is a very impressive guy. I don't know how much I can believe him, but it will tell. <laughs> Any good salesman has some dark side of it, too. Okay. Anyway, just last year, we were talking about making factory in USA. And it was a very hard decision, by the way. You think about it. In Vietnam, we had factories, and the labor cost of Vietnam per person is about, their GDP per capita in Vietnam per person is about 3,000. In USA, it's over 50, 60,000 dollars. Think about it. How you can think the manufacturing side from there to here. It was not easy decisions. But I met the Governor McMaster's. He convinced me that there is a chance I can make this factory working and successful and profitable in the future. We started building the factory end of last year. Now this factory is full operational. We have about 300 employees, very smart South Carolina employees, and we are producing lot. So at the end of this year, we may reach about one quarter of U.S. market need for washers. And in the future, we want to extend further to make South Carolina a home of Samsung home appliances for U.S. market. Thank you very much for coming. We are talking about IoT and Internet things. It's a very sexy word and everybody is talking about. IBM is one of the leaders in that and all other companies are talking about that. But I'd like to talk real things. What we can do based on IoT is not yet started. The help to real life, which we are, we are trying very hard in, in refrigerators, in washing machines, dishwashers, in cook, cooking, safety, health of a human being, is not yet there. We even didn't start it. We have very exciting future with collaboration of USC to make things different for the future, real IoT helping human being. Think about it, most of IoT may not help you, your health, your happiness, that much. It may help your intelligence, your data, but not you real. We are looking at you real as a person. This is the most important machine, also very efficient machine as human being. We're gonna help this human being in a very healthy way with collaboration with USC. Thank you. We've been here a very short time, and I, I, I was lucky enough to make a lot of friends here and there in USC. I really like this state. It's warm weather in the winter, and warm people. It's really southern hospitality is there. But not only that, how good workers which we have in the factory was very impressive too. Many of my colleagues from Korea come here to meet workers. They were so impressed. They didn't expect this kind of thing, this kind of high-skilled, well-prepared workforces. We cannot find enough now because the employment is so high in the state under the leadership of governor. I wish I have more people available to us to make bigger plant. Thank you. So again, this is great event. Uh, I'd like to have, uh, make sure that the Samsung will be active participant of USC leadership for this, the, the what is that they call it? Digital transformation is another sexy word, but anyway, utilizing IT. We do have both and we make a big investment and operation in Texas in making semiconductors. Those semiconductors will be the grain of all this new technology, whatever you guys come up with. 
artificial intelligence, what it is, and, and so on. So I'm very happy to be part of this event here, and I promise you the Samsung will be very active participant for the effort. Again, thank you, Mr. Governor and Mr. President. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Choi. Uh, as most of you probably recall, USC and Siemens announced a partnership in June of 2017. Uh, Howard West is here, who's, who was part of that, leading that team. Thank you again, Howard. Uh, this, the partnership with Siemens Software, they made an investment of a little over $628 million in a software grant to the University of South Carolina for engineering college, en college of engineering and computing, but also for McNair Research Center. Uh, today is actually evidence of today is how we're growing that relationship. I'm very excited that we just met last night for the first time, but I'm very excited to have Bill O'Neill, Vice President of Digital Enterprise Initiatives from Siemens here today to, again, thank you for the earlier partnership, but now we're expanding it in our Digital Transformation Lab. Please, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Nice to get out of the sun. It's a little bit warm over there. I'm from the north, so this is a little bit uh, hot for me. Uh, good morning and thank you to the University of South Carolina. Good move. The sexy man made the move. Okay, um, it's, really, it's really an honor to, honor to be here. Uh, Siemens has over 500 employees in the state of South Carolina. Many of our key customers, including some of the people here today, are also here in South Carolina. So we, we have a presence, significant presence here in the Palmetto State. We love it. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in industry, just to give a little bit of context, perhaps, to what's going on right here, what we're all uh, trying to accomplish. We're in the midst of an absolutely amazing shift in industry, and the DTL is really well positioned to help companies really thrive in this new environment. Consider for a moment the products that industry produces. They're getting smarter. They're more complex. They're more sophisticated. They're more personalized. Take as an easy example automotive, because we all see what's happening in the automotive industry. The personalization of cars with the amazing array of options available to individuals. The shift to driver assist and autonomous vehicles. And all the complexity for the car maker that comes along with that for design, development, production, and service. It's absolutely amazing what's happening to the products that we use as consumers and as industry. And this is happening in virtually all industries, in commercial and defense aircraft, cars, ships, medical devices, consumers, consumer products, retail products, even sneakers are getting smarter, more complicated, more individualized, um, and of course, electronics. So while the expectations are changing, based on the products that we, industry needs to produce. We're also experiencing an incredible convergence of technical innovation that ha has never happened before. We're changing the way products come to life, the way products are designed and created, applying systems of systems, intelligent models, amazing simulation capabilities that allow us to simulate just about anything prior to producing our first prototype, and generative design, which enables computers and algorithms to design products that we're not actually collectively smart enough to design ourselves. We're changing the way products are realized with the convergence of technology on the manufacturing side. When we create a new generatively designed product that can't be created in a, in a traditional machine tool environment, we apply additive manufacturing in order to produce something that couldn't be previously produced. Intelligent automation, artificial intelligence, and advanced robotics, we're all seeing it in the newspapers, we're seeing it in our lives, um, it's huge. We're changing the way products evolve after they've been produced. Products don't stay the same for as long as they used to. We're applying edge computing, we're applying cloud technology, data analytics, IIoT, to better understand how products are utilized and how to make them better, safer, faster, smaller, whatever the objective is. So if you take the tour later this morning, I really believe you're gonna see this convergence in action. All of these elements from the way products come to life, they're realized to how they evolve, are in place and in development in the lab. So companies need to be thinking 
about their businesses differently. The transformative power of this technology is key to the future of companies. It's also a threat to their future. This is even true in aerospace. When it, current advances in aerospace, next generation launch systems, autonomous, 3D, autonomous operations, 3D printed engine and aircraft components, to name a few. And it's an industry where we've seen startups change the forces of the industry and where we've seen established companies no longer have the position that they used to hold in their markets, suffer and decline. So this digital revolution that we've seen sweep through travel, music, and retail, and is in our, everybody's pockets somehow today, is now changing industry and the industrial world. Hope I'm doing okay on time. Getting close. So to thrive in this new environment, the key is not just the technology, it's the people behind the technology that will harness it. Companies need emerging talent, they need engineering students, that are prepared for the new environment. Universities need to transform their approach to education. Technology partners like all of us need to uh, embrace that and be a part of that transformation. We are and must be continued to developing the workforce of the future and helping to provide an engineering workforce that our customers need. We need to connect academia and industry to develop the future digital enterprise workers. This really requires the kind of affiliation with universities strategically like what we all have here with the University of South Carolina. It requires us to connect the students directly with our companies and with our customers, their companies. It requires us to empower the universities with things like industrial strength software, robotics, Watson, covering the entire industry value chain so they can develop best practice curriculum, training and certification. Project-based learning and STEM competitions reinforce the real-world application. A quick fact on Siemens, we're supporting more than one million students at more than 3,000 institutions worldwide. We're glad to have University of South Carolina as a key part of that. So really quickly, uh, a year ago we stood here and executed the grant that you referenced earlier. Today we're here to celebrate the opening of this lab. It really is the first of its kind, a university-based digital factory. In addition to the research projects that we're doing here, we're working together to incorporate this technology into academic programs in both the undergrad and graduate studies in order to better prepare students with the skills that the companies of the state of South Carolina and the US are looking for today and into the future. And I'd say we're just getting warmed up. We look forward to the exciting road ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, next, definitely not the last, uh, Chairman Agawa's son from Isakawa. I want to read about the company itself, and you've stood up before, but it's an honor to have him again. He came all the way from Japan, and what an incredible opportunity and honor to have you join us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just uh, about Yasukawa Corporation of Japan, offices in 28 countries, 14,000 employees worldwide, all under his command. Uh, Yasukawa is a parent company, uh, Yasukawa Motoman. It's a leading industrial robotics company in the Americas with more than 400,000 industrial robots installed globally. Uh, the chairman and his team came to USC earlier this year, actually it was about eight weeks ago, close to eight weeks ago, uh, and really looked at AI machine learning and robotics research. In a testament to the potential of our relationship, uh, within months, Yasukawa has delivered almost a million, dollar, a million, one million in state-of-the-art industrial robots for our USC researchers and students to use to perform research in a lab setting. Thank you again, sir. <laughs> uh, today, today, actually, you'll see it. We've got we to upfit it, but today you'll see it. We're pleased to announce the future site uh, the Isakawa AI Machine Learning Robotics Lab at University of South Carolina. So I'll say it again. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Um, our last speaker, and I'll cut because I'll hurry up a little, is uh, Dean Hajareri. He uh, joined us after 28 years at University of Virginia and, and then just undergraduate, graduate, and PhD at, at MIT. Uh, he has been a, an incredible resource, addition to the university, his thought leadership his investment strategies and things he's doing 
not only for research and digital transformation lab, but also for our students. The curriculum development is taking us to a whole new level. So, I, excuse me, level. So instead of reading all that, I just want to, Dean Hodgeberry, thank you for your friendship and, and please come up and say a few words. Good morning and uh, welcome and uh, thank you for being here today. It's a very exciting day for us, for me personally. I find uh, everything is coming together very well. Special thanks to our governor, President Pastidis, our partners. Thank you for being here. Uh, for my uh, few minutes, I want to just focus on the academic side. Uh, we have heard from the experts on IoT, AI, etc., and also the uh, business side. But I just want to talk about academics and what it means for the future of our college and this university. One of the things that really attracted me to this university was the strength of economic engagement activities. In particular, Bill, thank you very much for your friendship and all the work that you really have done with me and with the college. And it's just phenomenal what has happened here. Also, the strong support of the governor, secretary of commerce, these were really key factors in my decision to come here. We are viewed by the state as an asset as she continues to attract new companies. Uh, this was new experience for me. And we are viewed by companies as valuable partners. Academic and industry partnerships typically have a very long gestation period. We usually start with workforce development and short-term projects. Once certain level of trust is attained, then we move to research phase, which addresses longer term problems, larger scopes and greater funding and integration. So we are now at the beginning of this exciting second phase with many of our partners. Our goal is to have some of the R&D headquarters of our partners to move to South Carolina, and in particular to Columbia area. Today's announcements are a great start towards that vision. An essential ingredient for bringing this vision to fruition is the ability to co-locate faculty, students, and industry researchers together on campus so that they can work together. And towards that goal, the university has invested to more than double the footprint of our McNair Aerospace Innovation and Research Center. The new footprint houses additional activities in digital transformation, predictive maintenance, additive manufacturing, unmanned aerial, aerial vehicles, and combustion. The center is directed ably by Professor Bayumi. He's not here now. He's down at the lab making sure everything is under control. And today we have researchers from our partners living in this space, as Bill mentioned, a few of them. And they are working on a daily basis with our faculty and students on exciting solutions to very difficult problems. That will create real economic payoff for the companies and hence their willingness to invest some of their most valuable assets, the time of their researchers. I'm proud of our faculty and students because their good work has resulted in our partners bringing in other companies to work with us. And that is the ultimate testament to the quality of work that's happening here. And I would be remiss not to mention the generous support and vision of the original donors for McNair. Darla Moore, Anita Zucker, and Marva Smalls made the original investment which has enabled the above relationships, the ones that we talked about. And their vision has also enabled us to start the first and all, only aerospace engineering undergraduate degree in the state. Additionally, we expanded research, they expanded research activities. They trickled down into impactful experiences for our undergraduate students, either in the form of projects or participation in major research programs. And I close by just reminding you or mentioning that our College of Engineering and Computing is on track to grow its faculty size by 50% in the course of five years. We are halfway there. Our facilities continue to improve. We are reinventing our curricula, innovating new and timely degree programs and fostering academic partnerships, leading to additional pathways to degrees from USC. I invite you to come and visit anytime but hopefully starting today with the tour following this portion of the morning. Thank you very much for your time.